Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install Kali Linux. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch and install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. What I have in front of me here is the new Kali Linux 2020 January release, and there's a brief little overview of things that have changed. The biggest thing probably is that Kali Linux has now chosen to go ahead and by default create a new user besides root while installing Kali. This will help secure your desktop from a user being able to log in as a root user with administrative privileges and not, and not having to do that manually after you finish up the install process. So let's go ahead and go to the downloads section. Go ahead and hit download Kali Linux. Here we're going to be given a few different types of images that we can select from, depending on what you need. You'll probably want the Kali Linux 64-bit installer. This is 2 gig, so it's the full installer with all the packages, so you won't have to actually download anything from the internet while you're installing the Kali distribution. Besides that, they have a few more options. You have the 64-bit live version, so you can have a live desktop to try out before you actually install Kali Linux with this. And then of course you have your counterpart 32-bit architectures for older computers if necessary. And finally the net installer, which allows you to download a very small image, 285 megabytes, but uh, requires an internet connection in, in order to complete the install. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the Kali Linux 64-bit installer. That'll be enough for me. And the download has begun now. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch the Valena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD. Let's go ahead and find Valena Etcher. Valena Etcher is a easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. Let's first start by selecting an image. So that's the image that we just got done downloading. And as you can see here, I have Kali Linux 2020 January, the installer for the AMD or 64-bit architecture. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit open. Next, we're gonna go ahead and select a target. So what I'm gonna do is insert a USB now. And it'll automatically populate that USB for you, as you can see here. But if you do already have multiple USB CDs or DVDs, in your computer, you can go ahead and hit the change button and select between whatever USB, CD, or DVD you want to use. Once you've selected the correct one, you can go ahead and hit continue. Make sure that your USB, CD, or DVD has nothing on it because all of its contents will be erased in order to go ahead and put the installer on it and create a bootable disk out of it. So again, make sure everything's off of it. Go ahead and hit continue and then finally go ahead and hit the flash button. You might be asked for administrative privileges in order to run this program, so go ahead and hit yes. And after you've flashed a disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Kali Linux on, and then insert it. After that, you'll boot into your BIOS in order to change the boot order around and select the newly created bootable disk to be the first to boot. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys, such as F2 or F10. And then finding a tab, usually called boot order, and exchanging the order around so that the bootable disk is the first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS, and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. All right, and if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. We have a few options here. And uh, the one we want is actually the graphical install, so the very first option. You can also do install, but uh, it'll take you through a terminal install, and why not just make it easier on us? Hit the graphical install and give it a moment here. And once the installer is loaded, it's going to ask you to go ahead and select the language that you want to run the installer with. English will work for me. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Following that, we're going to select our location. I'm in the United States, so the default is fine for me. Go ahead and hit continue. Next, we're gonna go ahead and configure our keyboard. So select what uh, key map you want to use. Uh, American English, again, is the default and will work for me. 
you can go ahead and select yours and hit continue. Give it a few moments here while it mounts some stuff. Now we're being asked to go ahead and select a host name for the system. So other computers and network devices on your network will be able to see this host name. So go ahead and put something in that makes sense to you. Uh, Savvy Nick will work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and continue after that. If you want to go ahead and use a domain name, you can go ahead and put one in here. As it says, if it's a, a local home network computer, it can be whatever you want. Just make sure to make it unique. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip this step and just hit continue. I don't care about that. And here's a new portion to their installer where you go ahead and create a non-administrative account instead of the root user. This wasn't available before, but now is and is a great thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my new user to be Savvy Nick. I'm going to hit continue. And uh, the username for the account, Savvy Nick is fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a password in and confirm that password. So let's go ahead and do that and hit continue. And based on the language you selected, it's going to go ahead and give you a list of different time zones. Um, I'm going to be in the Hawaii time zone today, and I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. If you mess that up, you can go back to the choose language option and select a country that's correct. So let's go ahead and hit continue. Give it a moment here. And now we'll, we're being asked how we want to partition our disks. So there's a few options here. The first one is guided using the standard partitioning scheme, uh, which is the one we will use. But just to mention the few other options that you have, you have the use entire disk and set up an LVM. So that's a logical volume management, which just allows a little bit of easier management of your disk in the future. So if you had to resize things, this will definitely make it easier on you using the LVM. And then you also have the encrypted LVM. So that will encrypt your storage space and you'll be asked for a password every time you log in in order to get to that storage space. Manual will go ahead and avoid, that's for advanced users. So let's go ahead and use the guided use entire disk method. Now be warned, selecting this option says use entire disk. So it will use the entire disk up and erase anything that's currently on it. So you'll want to make sure that you have a, that you have a fresh storage space in your computer or one that you want to go ahead and overwrite all of its contents on. So let's go ahead and hit continue once we've confirmed that. And now if you have multiple disks, you'll be able to go ahead and select the proper one in here. I can see I have the 34.4 gigabyte storage disk available here, and that's the one that I want to go ahead and use. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Of course, again, make sure to double check and triple check that you've selected the proper hard disk because it will be repartitioned and everything will be deleted on it. So go ahead and hit continue once you've confirmed that. And there's just a few different schemes available to us here. Uh, a separate home partition if we want that, and then uh, multiple different partitions, including var and temp, if we want that as well. But uh, it says here, recommended for new users, so all files in one partition, that works very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it as default and hit the continue button. Right here, it's just giving us an overview of what's all going to happen. So all the steps that we went through will create us a primary partition of 25.8 gigabytes of uh, the ext4 formatted primary partition and then we have the logical uh, swap which is 8.6 gigs this is just used if your memory overflows you begin using swap space that exists on your storage disk it's just for fail safes as well as to offload some non-critical tasks too instead of having to use your physical memory Finally, if you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and select the finish partitioning and write changes to disk and then hit continue. You'll be warned one more time here that you're about to erase all the contents of the current disk. Uh, so you'll go ahead and hit the yes button if you're sure you're ready to go and it will begin writing the changes to the disk after you hit continue. So go ahead and do that. Give it a few moments here while it's installing the base system. Kali Linux is a Debian-based distribution with a focus on pen testing, forensics, and security. The main focus of Kali is to supply tools for users and developers to test their software and find vulnerabilities in their networks before others can exploit them. It's a great distribution if you're interested in cybersecurity, and there's even classes out there offered and based around using Kali Linux to detect exploits. It's really made a name for itself over the last few years and continues to be one of the top distributions for security. 
They also have a documentation for beginners as well as advanced members with examples that help you set up various scenarios that you can test with Kali. And I've gotten an interesting error here. It says there's been an APT configuration problem. So it seems like it's failed to configure APT to install additional packages. Let's go ahead and hit continue and see what happens here. Next, we get the option to configure a package manager. I'm not gonna go ahead and put anything in here. I don't have an HTTP proxy. So I'm gonna leave it blank for none and hit continue. Let's see if it'll configure APT properly this time. I'm not sure why I got that error. Seems to just be a bug because it's pressing along with the install here. And here's an important screen where you get to select all of the software that comes with this Kali install. So I want a uh, desktop environment and it's already XFCE here by default. You also have a few other options here. You can install the GNOME, KDE Plasma, LXDE, or MAPE versions of the desktop. Just make sure to only select one or you will have issues after installing Kali. I don't think you actually have to check this button at the top here because you already selected a sub menu item, but I went ahead and just did it anyway. So we have a few other options here. We have the generic meta packages already selected for us and the recommended tools. Um, we can also go through and scroll a little bit more here towards the bottom. And uh, here's actually an install tools by purpose. So not every tool comes standard with Kali, but you can go ahead and select the ones that you want. So if you wanted to go ahead and do some forensics, of course you would want the forensics package. If you want vulnerability analysis, you can go ahead and do that right here. If you want to be able to reverse engineer, you can do it with these tools. So depending on what you want to use Kali for, you can go ahead and select the various different types of uh, tools. Just know that you can also install these later on as well, that you're not forced to install them right now. So really all the defaults are fine by me. I'm gonna go ahead and install tools later, so I'm not gonna select any. You can select the ones that you want. And then um, as long as you don't want a different desktop environment, we're good to go. Go ahead and hit continue. And once you've made it this far, the Kali installer will ask you about installing the Grub Bootloader. Since this is a clean install of Kali Linux, we, we will need the Grub Bootloader on the master boot record. If you do have a different operating system alongside Kali, you get this warning here. If the installer failed to detect another operating system that is present on your computer, modifying the record might uh, cause the operating system to temporarily be unbootable because Grub will overwrite it and you'll be forced to manually go ahead and add a grub in order to get the other operating system to boot with Cal. Also, if it detects another operating system, it will try to go ahead and say that it exists on this disk, but it, since this is a fresh disk install, we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, yes. And here's where you get to go ahead and select which hard disk you wanna go ahead and install that grub bootloader on. If you have multiple devices, make sure to select the correct one and then hit continue. Give it a few moments here just to finish up the installation. And here the Kali installer is now ready for you to go ahead and finish the installation by rebooting. And while you're rebooting, you'll wanna make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you have in the computer so you don't boot back into the installer or the live image of the system. Otherwise, you'll have to reboot once more and take out the media to get to your newly installed system. Let's go ahead and hit continue. We'll be able to go ahead and log in with our non-privileged user. So we can go ahead and do savvy nick, put your password in, make sure to type in whatever username you used and whatever password you used when you created a new user in the installer. Go ahead, hit the login button, 
and now we're welcomed by our new Kali Linux desktop environment. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Kali Linux on your computer and that resolution looks much better for me. What I'm going to do now is just show you around the desktop real quick. This is the XFCE desktop and on the top left hand side you have a start menu where you can go ahead and filter or search for various items inside the Kali Linux system. You have your favorites here, which it has a few favorites already for you, as well as various different subcategories with tools that you can use. So if you wanted to go ahead and do some forensics, you can click forensics, and now you have your tools that are available for forensics at the moment. At the bottom left, you can see what user is currently logged in. So Savvy Nick is logged in. You have all settings right here. If you want to click on that, you can lock the screen as well as log out from down here. Back to the top, if you click on this button here, this will minimize all the open windows and show the desktop. So it's really just a quick access to your desktop. Then you have your file manager here. If you go ahead and you hit the open folder, you'll open your file manager. And this is the home directory for the current user that's logged in, so Savvy Nick. If we go ahead and go to the right here, we have the terminal emulator. So you can go ahead and use terminal after you've launched it with that button. And following that, we can go ahead and use Kazam to record a video or take a screenshot. It's a nice little application to have. Right here, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but we have different types of workspaces. So if you want to work on different spaces and you have more than one opened up, you can go ahead and switch between them. Some other stuff on the right hand side, you can see the time here, as well as the current connected wired connection or wireless connection. Then you have a sound, which you can adjust the volume here of both the microphone and your audio output. So you also have notifications such as updates that might need to be attended to. And then here you have some basic computer settings uh, to put it in a presentation mode and then change the power settings around. And finally on the right hand side here you have the lock button to lock the screen again as well as log out. If you do hit the log out you actually get a few more options here so you can restart shut down switch users and uh, do a couple other things as well. That's really it for Kali Linux here. We've successfully installed it at this point. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Kali Linux and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to go ahead and subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.